Hey guys, I'm Alex and this is Finally Functional. If you're new here, I'm making VR shoes. Most of my previous versions have been big, clunky, heavy, and have a big motor in it like this shoe. But lately I've been experimenting with a small, light, durable shoe like this, which doesn't have a motor in it for now. And initial testing went pretty well. In the last video, I went over this design, what I liked about it, didn't like about it, and I did some testing. Now in this video, I'm gonna go over what I have been working on since then. I've been working on a new design that improves upon a lot of things I didn't like with this design. So I don't need this anymore. Let's get started. In the previous design, I had brakes that looked like this. You turn this screw right here and it would add uh, rolling resistance to the axle here so the wheels didn't turn as nicely. This is what it looks like. That's how big it is. In the next design, I made the brake smaller. You can see it's right here and smaller than in the previous version. And then there's this knob here that you can turn to make the brake tighter or make it looser. And this knob is accessible while you're wearing the shoe so you can kneel down and change the resistance while you're wearing them if you want. This is what the brake looks like. Here is a disc that goes in the middle. And as you turn this knob here, it tightens around that disc, creates some resistance. And then there is a little piece of neoprene in there to add a bit more grip to that because the TPU here that this is made out of is pretty slippery. But there's an issue with this brake. If you tighten it down a good amount, it squeaks. Makes a very annoying squeaking noise. Another issue is this disc in here, it can wear out over time. And I'm gonna want an easy way to replace this disc when it wears out. But the way the shoe is now, you'd have to take apart the whole axle to take the brake out and replace that disc. So what I did was I took and I moved the brake to the side. And now it looks like this. So this is the disc from before, same as before. And then there's a piece of neoprene that goes around this. And this doesn't seem to squeak. If there's more neoprene, I don't have to tighten this thing down as much and it just doesn't seem to squeak as much. And yeah, moved it to the side. And now it's really easy. You just take the disc off and then you can grab a new one and put it on and you tighten down these set screws and then you're good to go. So easy to replace. And the way this is tightened down is you would turn the screw I'd replace this with a thumb screw so it's easy to turn and you can see this part would be, would be pushed down and it would wrap around the disc harder and that would create more resistance as this thing turns. So I tightened this brake down and I rolled the wheels using my foot for about five minutes and I discovered there were some more problems with this brake. One of the problems is this thing gets pretty hot. It's constantly rubbing on the neoprene there. And unlike other brakes where it's just rubbing when you need to brake, this thing is constant. As the wheels turn, it's always rubbing. So this thing actually got pretty hot. And this has a little bit of wear on it. Not too much, but it's already starting to have a little bit of wear on it, even after just five minutes. And then due to the friction and the heat, the TPU here actually melted a little bit. Then also this neoprene strip, it started fragmenting and it's already showing a lot of wear and it left little bits of rubber on my floor all over the place. So this idea to replace the brake is to have something that slides along the floor as the shoe moves and as it slides, it rubs along the floor, it creates some resistance. So that's what this thing is. And the idea behind it is there's a much larger surface area here. So the wear that this thing has is going to be spread out over a much larger area and it's going to um, last much longer. And then the heat that is going to be generated will also be dispersed through this much larger part and um, it can be dispersed into the floor as well. One thing I found with this is that this piece, this um, TPU piece, as it rubs on the floor, it's kind of loud. It makes a, a, a noisy scraping sound. This operates under the same principles that the shoes that come with slide mills operate on. 
So the shoes that come with slide mills, they have these strips, um, kind of like this, that you can put in the shoes. And the more strips there are in the shoes, the more friction there is. And as you get more, as you get better with the device, become more of an expert, you can take the strips out and um, it's more slippery, sl slippery, but you know, you know how to work, use the device more. So this is kind of the same idea. Uh, this rubber strip rubs along the ground the same way those strips would run or rub along the slide mill, but it's noisy. And I've also heard that the strips and just slide mills in general are also noisy. So you need to figure that out. So this is what I came up with. I cut a sock and I stapled it to this piece and this sock, this still rubs on the ground and provides some good resistance and it's much quieter. So much quieter than this plastic piece here sliding along the ground. I would probably not use a sock. I'd probably um, get one of those strips of carpet, those squares of carpet that you can get at the store and just cut one of those. But yeah, um, this is my way to make the, to, to make this floor slider much quieter. And yeah, uh, so this thing, this uh, mechanism is very, very simple, but it would be hard to adjust it. So to make it so that there's more resistance, You'd have to increase the height of these things so that this thing is pushed into the ground more. So you need to like add spacers on here, here and here. So to do that, you'd have to disassemble this thing, put the spacers in and then reassemble it. So it's kind of a pain in order to change it around. It's not very easy to adjust the resistance, but it's very simple. So I like that about it. Here is my other idea. So what I have is a spring, an extension spring right here. And over here, I have a string that wraps around the axle right here. So when the wheel turns back here, the extension spring will get pulled like that. And the idea behind this is that as when you put your foot down in front of you and you bring your foot back, this will start winding up and it'll provide that little bit of resistance that I want the shoe to provide. And it'll be a gradual increase of resistance. So as you bring your foot back, the resistance will get more and more until it actually stops you. So what I mean by that is, say I bring my foot forward to take a step and then I put my foot down and now I'm sliding it back. As I slide my foot back, that spring's gonna get um, pulled and when it's up here at the front, there's not gonna be much resistance at all. The spring's not gonna be providing much resistance. But as I go back more and more, the resistance is gonna be more and more until when my foot gets behind me, the idea is there's enough resistance to stop my foot from going back, which I wanna do anyway. I wanna stop my foot from going back so that I can bring it forward again. So the idea is that the spring will actually help you stop your foot and then you can bring it forward again and it, there won't be much resistance at the front here because you don't really want much resistance at the front. You want it to be easy to start bringing your foot back. It's really only at the back that you want a lot of resistance so that it stops your foot from going back too far like, like this. So of course there are a few issues with this idea. One is that when the spring snaps back, it's a little loud and annoying. So if I tension the spring all the way, and then I let it snap back. It creates a little bit of noise and imagine that noise happening every time you take a step. I think maybe what I could do is I could put something soft in between, uh, the, in the space here. And maybe then when the spring comes back, the metal on metal, it won't be, it won't hit. It won't make a whole lot of noise. If I have something in the space here in between all of these coils and it might be a lot quieter. So that might be something that I could do to try to fix that. Another problem is that I said, I want this thing to provide resistance, especially when your foot gets behind here, uh, kind of behind you. I want it to provide enough resistance so that it helps you stop your leg so that you can bring it back forward. But with this spring, it's not strong enough. I bring my foot back and 
I don't really feel it at all. The, the spring doesn't provide a lot of resistance. I just, I don't feel it as I bring my foot back. And even as I get back here behind me, I don't really feel it that much. And you might be thinking, well, I just need to get a stronger spring that can provide more resistance. The problem is that I need a spring that is both strong, but can stretch a good length. So I need a spring that can stretch an addition, about an additional four inches. That's what I calculated to get a about 30 inch stride length. I need an additional four inches of stretch. So the spring itself is two inches then plus four. So I need six inches. And this is the spring that I found that had the um, greatest force, the greatest um, poundage, but it could also stretch the distance that I needed it to. So this one, had the best of both and it still really wasn't strong enough. So I don't really think I can find a much stronger one unless I go with one that can't stretch as far, but then the stride length um, can't be as long or you'd over tension the, sp the spring. Another potential issue that I'm not sure about is I'm not sure the lifespan of these extension springs. I don't know how many cycles that they can last. I don't know if it's in the millions or if it's just in the thousands. So Every time you take a step, this thing will stretch and then, un and then unstretch. So during a, a play session, you might be stretching and unstretching this thing thousands and thousands of times. So this spring has to really last. And I'm not sure how long these springs last. If any of you guys know, let me know. Now you might be saying, well, get more springs. So hook up two or three springs here so that there's more force, but you can still, they can still all stretch the same distance. I think that would work. There's just not really room here to do that. Maybe I could move the spring like underneath here and I could have a couple of them. And then maybe another thing I could do is take this whole assembly and like put it on the back and then have it stretch up, up like this. And then have a bunch of springs up here on the back or something like that. But then I have to like route the string over to the side, over to this axle or I'd have to move the axle back. So those are all possibilities, but I'm just trying to weigh the complexity of doing all that with the effort. And I do have the floor slider mechanism too, which should work and is much simpler. This video is getting a bit long. So in the next video, I'm gonna go over the other improvements and I'm gonna do some demoing. I'm actually gonna use these to walk around and do a little bit of running and jumping. I already have all the footage I need for the next video. I just have to edit it. So expect that one within a couple of days of this video. Thanks for watching, like, and subscribe. See you guys next time.